Y'all not on, look, they not only murdered a young man in cold blood. They did it under mistaken circumstances and he was a military service member. Oh, y'all messed up big time. Y'all messed up big time. Look, that to me is a gigantic lawsuit. Gigantic lawsuit. Y'all, and this is why I think it's deeply important for us to end qualified immunity in this country. Because ultimately, you need to be able to hold these people accountable. If you are black in the United States, one can conclude that you do not have Second Amendment rights. By looking at what we have endured in this country and what we continue to endure in this country, your Second Amendment rights are null and void whenever it comes to you needing to protect yourself. There are many different stories that we have went over in years past, especially those of us in the black community. One of the most famous ones was Philando Castile, where his uh, he was stopped and they asked him if he had a firearm and he said, yes, he was a licensed firearm holder. And yet he was still murdered by police because once they see this, that is considered an elevated risk of danger. That's how it is. We got into another situation here and there's a young gentleman by the name of Roger Fortson. Now, Roger Fortson was 23 years old and he was a military service member, more specifically an airman here in Florida. So I'm going to go over, I'm gonna go over what uh, someone on Twitter recounted first, then we'll get into the video and then we'll get into the article. So let me share this first. So this is from Kenny Ackers on Twitter. Let me enlarge this just to make it big enough. All right, okay. So this is from Kenny Ackers. He says, active duty senior airman Roger Fortson, age 23, was tragically killed in a shooting involved in a Florida Sheriff's deputy by a Florida Sheriff's deputy on May 3rd, 2024, assigned as a special missions aviator operating a AC-130J Ghost Rider gunships with the 4th Special Operations Squadron. Fortson was shot at his off-base home in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, under contentious circumstances involving his Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office. Initially, the Sheriff's Office claimed a deputy was acting in self-defense against an armed individual, a narrative which Fortson's family and legal team strongly contested. They argue that Fortson was at home engaged in a FaceTime call with his girlfriend at the occurrence of the fatal event, claiming deputies entered the wrong domicile, causing an, unsuspect, uh, causing an unsuspecting Fortson to react to an apparent home invader the incident has sparked debates over law enforcement's use of force and the credibility of the sheriff's office account. In an effort for transparency, the Okaloosa County Sheriff shared body camera footage of the episode, capturing the deputy's knock on Fortson's door and subsequent reaction resulting in the shooting. The occurrence has elicited 
demands for a comprehensive investigation and increased transparency from the implicated authorities. So this is the young man, Roger Fortson. So Roger was a young man and You know, we, we always get tagged as, oh, he was no angel, or police were just acting in self-defense. Or they'll say, well, he should have complied. And then they'll try to go into his background and say, see, he was a bad egg. For all those people that wave the American flag, that say, this land was made for you and me. <laughs> was it? Let's get to this before I go off. Let's get to this video recounting what the details are. Now to newly released body cam video of the fatal police shooting of a black U.S. airman in his own home last week. His family fighting for the video's release and demanding our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, has the latest for us. Good morning, Pierre. Michael, good morning. There are more questions and answers in this truly tragic story. And warning, the video you're about to see is truly disturbing. This is the moment U.S. Airman Roger Fortson was fatally shot in his own home by a Florida sheriff's deputy. Sheriff's office, open the door. Step out. You see it. That was very quick. Let's go over it again. Hang on. Hang on. That was quick. Right? This is the moment U.S. Airman Roger Fortson was fatally shot in his own home by a Florida sheriff's deputy. Sheriff's office, open the door. Hang on. Why isn't he in front of the peephole so that Roger can actually see that it's the sheriff's office? Why is he standing off to the side? You tell me. Somebody bangs on your door, especially if you're not paying attention. Right? If you're not paying attention, you're like, wait, what? What did you say? And as soon as you open the door, because you're suspicious, huh? Hang on, he just knocked the door, yelled sheriff's office, but you don't see nothing. You don't see a police officer and your people. Watch. Step back. He said, step back. Boom, just like that. Wait, hang on. Was anything pointed at the office? Was anything pointed at all? Hold up, let me see something. And his finger's not even on the trigger. If you look close enough, his finger's not even on the trigger. Like he's prepared. Also, let me ask you this question. Do we have a stand your ground law in Florida or not? Do we? Because last time I checked, we were supposed to have one. 
how many black people died because of that? When I said that those of us who are black feel like, and it seems that we do not have a second amendment right in this country, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. Because your Second Amendment right is supposed to be protected by the same people that killed Roger Fortson. They're supposed to be the ones that go, the ones that supposed to protect you. But as we learned, right, and you guys can go on the Google machine yourself, that the police law enforcement in this country do not have a constitutional right to protect you. That was set by the Supreme Court. Look it up yourself. They, Sheriff's Office, get out of the way so that you don't see them. Then open the door, step back. Bah, 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 bah. No time to react. No time to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. No time to put the gun down. They could have said, put the gun down, put the gun down. And he would have put it down, been like this. And they would have discovered they got the wrong door. Any wonder why we say defund the police? Any wonder? Why in the hell do we ask for reparations in this country? Because a crap like this keeps happening. Because y'all, because this country decided that they still wanted to keep slavery in place as an exception in the 13th Amendment. Because we have a system of policing that sees us as criminals by default just by the color of our skin. Just because of our African features. We're seen as dangerous, unhinged, thugs. Let's continue. You see it all play out in newly released body camera footage from the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Department. The officer announces his presence at Fortson's apartment after receiving a report of a disturbance. Sheriff's office, open the door. Fortson. Over a disturbance. Man. Appears and is shot almost instantaneously. Watch closely, slow down, and you see the door open. There appears to be a gun in Fortson's right hand, but it's pointing downward, never aimed at the officer, who immediately fires. Oh, we respect the second right um, the second amendment right here in Florida. This is the Florida where you can. You can conceal carry in this state. I almost cussed. You can conceal carry in this state. And yet, somebody in their home who's trying to protect themselves is immediately shot at their front door. If this wasn't police, if this was some vigilante would they get the benefit of the doubt? Let's continue. Striking Fortson in the chest and arm. Fortson later died at the hospital. He shot up. My baby was shot up. <laughs> His family claiming authorities had the wrong apartment, that Fortson was alone on the phone with his girlfriend. Authorities say the investigation will be thorough. 
I want to assure you that we are not hiding, covering up, or taking action that would result in a rush to judgment of Mr. Fortson or our deputy. But this morning, it's unclear whether Fortson actually caused the reported disturbance. Tell the truth about my son. I know my son did not do anything to you guys. The military wanting answers as well. We certainly never want to see our airmen or any military member uh, or any part of our DOD family uh, be put into a situation uh, like this. Y'all not, oh, look, they not only murdered a young man in cold blood. They did it under mistaken circumstances and he was a military service member. Oh, y'all messed up big time. Y'all messed up big time. Look, that to me is a gigantic lawsuit. Gigantic lawsuit. Y'all, and this is why I think it's deeply important for us to end qualified immunity in this country. Because ultimately, you need to be able to hold these people accountable. So in two weeks, um, is it two weeks? No, no, next week. I'll be having on Cynthia Brown. She'll be returning uh, for the Commission to End Qualified Immunity in Ohio. And it's stories like this where why people like Cynthia Brown is actually fighting to end qualified immunity. Because we need to hold these guys accountable. We need to hold these police accountable for what they do. Because they are too damn trigger happy and they're even more trigger happy when they look like me. I'm telling you right now, when I think of reparations for us, for ADOS, I think of not just reparations for slavery, not just reparations for Jim Crow, not just reparations for mass incarceration, reparations for unlawful death like this. And it should go beyond just uh, holding the city accountable. Like we should not have to pay tax money for this. It should come out of the cop's own pocket because you should be damn careful to make sure that you don't kill somebody who's innocent. Hell, even if they're guilty, that does not make you judge, jury, and executioner, especially if they're not a danger to you. And people are like, well, he had split second. He, he, he had to make sure, he had to defend himself. That's what training is for. That's what training is for. I'm sorry, but why in the world are you tasked with being able to carry a firearm, dangerous weapons in order to subdue, maim, and or kill somebody, and you do not have extensive training like someone like a physician, someone like a surgeon, someone like a pilot, why in the world are police given what six months training and then they're out on the street? Why aren't they thoroughly trained in the law so that they don't have to waste a lawyer's time? Man, I'm telling you, this is some BS. This SAS case is now a full-scale criminal investigation conducted by state law enforcement officials. With that video. And it's sad because this shouldn't have never happened. Oh. 
like it happens all too often. Another young man, life taken. And this is one of the reasons why I talk about that we need to change this system from the bottom up. Roger Fortson should still be alive to this day. I really, really do hope that he and his family get just, that his family gets justice. But these guys will escalate time and time again, over and over. And I'm gonna tell you, one of the reasons why I also say that we as black people do not have second amendment rights in this country. I don't care what anybody says. They can say, well, there are lots of black people that own guns, blah, blah, blah. But when the, when the state gets involved, it evaporates, it all goes away. Let me share this. I wanna shout out to Roger Meadows for, for this. Shared this uh, earlier. It's not a full story that I'm that I'm uh, abreast of right now, but I just want to touch on it because this uh, solidifies my point. Uh, this is from Mario Newfall. It says Brooklyn man sentenced for assembling ghost guns at home. It says Dexter Taylor received a ten year sentence for building firearms from legally bought parts in his Brooklyn apartment. Convicted on multiple weapons charges, he was described by prosecutors as possessing a, quote, massive arsenal of homemade ghost guns, unquote. The court disallowed Second Amendment defenses with the judge stating it doesn't exist here. I want you guys to read that with me again. The court disallowed Second Amendment defenses with the judge stating it doesn't exist here. Every single person in this country that's in a militia that talks about, oh, we need to stand for our Second Amendment rights because we want to defend against tyranny. Here it is. Here it is, your tyranny. Where are you? Y'all got the don't turn on me flag? There it is. There it is. There it is. Whoop, there it is. And are you guys protesting in front of that courthouse? Are you guys protesting that judge with your don't tread on me flags? I hope you are because there it is. But you're not going to go out there, are you? Are you? Nah, nah, you're not going out there because he doesn't fit the description of what you guys like to defend. Put your money where your mouth is. Put your money where your mouth is. Use your First Amendment right and protest against him being sentenced to prison for being a responsible, legal gun owner. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put your money where your mouth is. Use your First Amendment right to protest. Prove me wrong. Let's continue. It says, Taylor, a software engineer, argued that his firearm assembly was merely a hobby. His defense fund has raised nearly $175,000. So this is great, great, great tweet here. Pat, Pat Head T says, where is Donald Trump at? He needs to be standing up for this man. He tagged uh, Senator Ted Cruz, Chip Roy, Thomas Massey. Uh, Senator John Kennedy, Josh Hawley, like, wait, where y'all at? Where's the tweets? 
Look, get your Twitter fingers ready. Let's go. Let let let's 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 raise money for him, for bail. Let's get him a defense team. Come on, let's go. Where y'all at? So this is why I say the Second Amendment for Black people is non-existent in this country. Because whenever we want to express and and use our Second Amendment rights, the state, by means of white supremacy, yes, we're going to say it, says, no, you can't do it. And we know this because it has been done in the past. Especially when the Black Panther Party decided to defend their neighborhoods with their own firearms in the streets because the police wasn't doing the job of protecting and serving. So therefore, that's what they did. And when they went to the Capitol to protest, they had their firearms with them because it's their Second Amendment right. And that spooked the hell out of Ronald Reagan. So much so that he introduced gun reform in California because of the Black Panthers. Patron saint of the Republican Party, patron saint of conservatives, put in gun reform because Black people were armed by their constitutional right. Because it was all fine and well if you were paper towel colored, but let you have a little extra melanin in your skin and next thing you know, it's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. When we wrote the Second Amendment, we meant for this color, not this color. Let me share something with you. Make sure I have it up. I'm gonna share this site and I've shared it many times before, but I think those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. But I think this is something that you also need to take into account. This is what we demand because in order to change the system, you have to have demands ready in order to do that, right? So this is called 10forjustice.com. My comrade, Nick from RBN, uh, Zoya, as well as Awkward, they helped create this site. It's called 10 for Justice, The Road to Abolition. Uh, it says 10 Demands for Justice envisions a new society in which prisons and police are no longer necessary and communities are equipped to provide for their own health and safety. 10 Demands for Justice offers a roadmap for the defunding and then full abolition of police and prisons beginning with the immediate actions to end police violence, as well as racism and classism in policing, prosecution, and sentencing. And then you go over the 10 demands, which we will see here. I'm not gonna go over them in detail. I'm just going to name them off. And then you guys will have the link and then you guys can take a look and peruse yourself. But number one, it says defund the police and reallocate resources to impacted communities. Number two, Demilitarize the police, absolutely. Three, eliminate discriminatory policing, prosecution, and sentencing. Number four, institute complete law enforcement transparency and accountability. Number five, independently investigate all police crimes and abuses of power. Number six, install community representation, oversight, and safety measures. Number seven, and strategic counter protest violence. I'm gonna be getting into that in my next story. So yes, number eight, apologize and provide reparations. I said it that way because the emphasis is the word repair. Number nine is in the war on drugs. And number 10 is in carceral 
punishment. Yes, this is absolutely necessary. And if you are black, you need to look at this website. If you're white, you need to look at this website. If you are anybody else, whether it's Latino, Asian, I don't care, Martian, you need to look at that website. Why? Because it also means your life too. So I'm going to share this really quick with you guys because it is absolutely necessary. But make sure to always, always, always keep watch over yourselves when they're around. Justice for Roger Fortson. Thank you so very much for watching my channel. And I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JBFON. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.